Greetings, the internet. This is Ninark, and welcome back to my tutorial series on making a Pokemon-style uh, RPG. Now, I've been gone for a little while. I went to Japan. It was awesome. I'll tell you all about it, about it, but you have other things more important to do, like learn how to make video games. So, uh, we're going to do that. So today, we're going to be going over random encounters and using the function object inside Construct 2. Um, so, this is important because it's a really important part of game design and you should know how to use a function. So, let's get started. Let's right click, insert a new object. We're going to make a sprite. Let's resize it to 64 by 64. And we're going to fill it with a green color. So, this is going to be our tall grass. Now, oh, oh one more thing. Go over to the set origin point and set it to the top left so that we're not screwing with anything grid wise. Um, Right, so this is going to be our placeholder for our tall grass. So we're actually going to make it invisible when you're playing the game so that we can have cool art underneath it. But this is so when you're making your game, you know, like, okay, all this area is tall grass, um, etc. So uh, the first thing we want to do is go to add an instance variable. And we're going to add a variable. We're going to make it name it uh, grass type. And we're going to change it to text make our initial value, uh, we can do bug for right now. So what is this? Basically, um, our grass can have different types of Pokemon spawn on different types of grass. Obviously, we want that because we don't want the same uh, cycle of Pokemon everywhere you go. So um, we're going to have our instance variable grass type, and we're going to start with bug just because I decided that. Um, but what's cool is if you control C, control V, or you just hold control and drag it, we can change this grass type to be bird, for example. And now if you click back to this one, you'll see this one's still bug and this one's bird. And when we start making our function, uh, we'll be able to reference that and figure out, okay, well, if we're over this grass type, only spawn bug Pokemon, this one bird Pokemon, right? So let's uh, get into the action. Um, if we go to the top where our player timer, step timer equals zero at the very beginning, uh, we want a new sub event here. And this is because uh, this represents when we reach the end of, of a cycle and we get to a grid point, we're going to roll the dice then. So uh, let's add a new event below. We're going to go to uh, player is overlapping our green sprite. And we should probably change the name of this sprite to tall grass so that we don't get confused. I have made games where almost every object was called sprite something, and that is not a fun way to do things. Um, so if, if our character is overlapping at uh, our tall grass at the zero, we also want to do one more thing. We're going to add a new condition. And we're going to go to system and trigger once while true. This is so when we're overlapping the tall grass, it's not going to keep rolling the dice. We just want it to be, OK, it reaches zero. Is it overlapping? OK, roll the dice. So we also want to do one more thing. Right click on here. We're going to add a local variable. Now, what is a local variable? Basically, this variable only exists uh, in this little uh, frame of actions. So it doesn't have to take up uh, space in the rest of your game. We don't have to know like every single time, like everywhere you are, whether or not our role is whatever. I don't know if that made any sense at all. Probably didn't. But um, basically, it's only going to exist right here, right now. And that's all we need. So our local number number role is currently equal to zero. That doesn't really matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an action, go to system. Then we're going to set value. We're going to set our, our role value. Now, our, as you can see here, our global variable has this globe. That means it's a global variable. If it has this little uh, Gmail or uh, Google Maps like little icon, that means it's local. Um, and yeah, so you can't reference this variable anywhere else in the code, basically. Um, yeah, so we're going to do a couple things. Now we're going to start off with random. So random is exactly what you think. You, we're going to put a parenthesis after the random, and it's going to give you a couple things, uh, a couple ranges. So you can have like, a, if you just write 100, it will make a random variable from 0 to 100. If you do 0, 100, or a better example would be 50, 100, um, it's going to make a number that's only between 50 and 100. Uh, in our case, we want it to be 0 to 100, so we can just write 100 for the sake of it. Now, uh, a problem is when it's choosing a random number, it's going to choose it really randomly, so it's going to have uh, uh, decimal values. So the way we get rid of that, 
Um, I'm going to retype this so you can see what happens. We're going to write floor first. Now what floor does is basically just takes a number and it rounds it down to an integer, which it says right there. Um, so basically if you uh, roll like a 67.7, it's going to just make it 67 or 68. Um, so floor, random. So make sure you put the parentheses afterwards because inside we're going to choose a new random number. Random, if I can spell, make it 100. And then as you can see, there's like little gray lines around these, this parenthesis. That means that this parenthesis is related to this parenthesis over here. And so you know that you have maybe extra parentheses or not enough parentheses. And in our case, we have not enough parentheses because our floor still requires a parenthesis. So you can put one here. And as you can see, it highlights that. So you can tell like, okay, this is this one. That one's that one. I know this is a little tedious, but um, it's important to understand these types of things, especially since we're not, uh, you're probably not coming from like a strict coding background. Uh, so yeah, so it's gonna round our, our number down uh, to a random number between zero and 100, and that's exactly what we want. Right, um, so when this happens, so this whole thing, we land on the grass, it triggers it once, it rolls the dice. Now we wanna make a new sub event, so press S, and we're gonna go to system, compare variable, if our roll is less than or equal to, uh, let's say 20 in this case. Uh, so every time it rolls the dice, if it's less than 20, it's going to start our function. Now, what is a function? Well, we're gonna get into that right now. Terrible analogy alert. Uh, you ever press this button on a calculator? Uh, you probably already know that this just squares your number, but what's actually happening? Well, it's very similar to a function in a computer. Wow. Basically, you have your parameter, so your parameter in this case is whatever number you type into your screen. So let's press the button 5, press, um, and you'll see that the 5 comes up. Now, if you go over to the uh, square button and you press it, it actually performs a little function. It takes your input, your parameter, and it multiplies it by itself and then returns the uh, function value. So your 5 it doubles it and it multiplies it by itself. Well, it doesn't double it, it actually just multiplies it by itself and it spits out a uh, result and you can use that in you know, designing your room or whatever you happen to be multiplying five by five for, maybe making a really big square. So I hope that made any sense. Anyway, we're gonna be using that right now. So we want to uh, make sure we add a function to our game. So uh, you can actually, you actually have to insert an object and go down to general, to function, to use a function. Uh, you don't have to place it anywhere. It's similar to the keyboard object type. It just allows us to use functions in our game. Cool. Uh, so I actually want to make a new event sheet. So click on event sheets over here. Go to add event sheet. We're going to call this event sheet functions. All right. This is really important. Go to your first event sheet where you have all your code. It might be called event sheet one if you are cooler than me. You might have named it something interesting. Um, but you want to make sure that you click on some white space, go to include event sheet, and then double click on your functions. Now our layout layout one is only referencing our event sheet one. Um, but it has no idea that this function uh, event sheet exists at all. So by including it in here, you're allowing our layout to access that event sheet. It's really important. It could cause a lot of headaches if you don't do that. So remember this all right so let's go back to here and uh remember what's going on if overlapping drag grass it triggers once it rolls the number if the roll is less than 20 we want to make a function occur so we're going to add action go to function and go to call function now we're going to name our function right now so let's call it encounter make sure you put your parentheses because it doesn't know uh whether or not this is a uh string or not in this case it is, and we want to make sure you click on this button that says add parameter. Now this is going to, going to be our 5 from our calculator analogy. Um, in this case though, we want our parameter 1 to be the, our grass type. So the way we do that, if you are overlapping a tall grass, Construct knows that when you reference tall grass, that you're referring to that specific instance of the tall grass. So we could just write, you know, bug, um, and every time a bug encounter would come up it would do that, but we can just do this. We can go to tall grass, and then put our dot notation afterwards, and we're going to go to uh, our tall grass to grass type. So now, when you run this function, it's going to reference, uh, anytime you reference parameter one, it's going to know that it means the tall grass type of the tall grass that you're on, and 
if you were here, it would be, uh, oops, uh, it would be bug in this case. All right, so this does nothing right now because we don't actually have a function called encounter. So let's go to our functions tab, add an event. We're gonna go to function, on function, and we're gonna call it encounter because that is the name that we already decided on for our function. Now we wanna do a couple things real quick. We're gonna create a sub event, go to function, compare parameter. Now I know I just said parameter one like just a second ago, but actually uh, computers count from zero. So our first parameter is parameter zero. So that's what index means. It's, it's what uh, parameter we're referencing. So we're gonna go to zero and we're gonna go to equal to, and remember our value of our first parameter is going to be our grass type. So in this case, we're gonna use bug because that is our first grass type. Um, now, uh, we wanna do another condition and we're gonna to go to trigger once while true. I don't actually know if that's super important, but I like to do it just to be safe. And we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna create a new local variable. Now this uh, function is nested within uh, the block that we had before. So as you can see, our local number role is within here. So it's going downwards into our function. Um, and uh, so we can't actually use role again because it will reference the other role. So we're gonna call this one role creature. Yeah, and we're gonna make it a number. Zero is fine. Okay, uh, so what we wanna happen if our parameter is bug, we wanna add an action. We're gonna go to system, set value. We're gonna go to role creature and we're gonna change the value to floor, uh, random. And let's do a zero to 100. Well, we can, we can just leave the 100. And make sure you add the extra parentheses at the end. This is a common mistake, but luckily Contract 2 won't let you finish until you actually finish it. So that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, so it's gonna set our creature role to floor random. Now we're gonna add a new sub event. We're gonna go to function, compare parameter. Uh, I mean, sorry, <laughs> we're not gonna do that at all. We're gonna add a new sub event and we're gonna go to system compare value and go to our role creature. Now, if our role creature is let's say greater than or equal to zero, and control C, control V, make sure you put this within the same block because we want this to be is less than, let's say 50. So if it's greater than zero or less than 50, we want them to encounter a creature uh, and we want to name that creature something specific, but we don't have a variable yet to do that. So let's add a new global variable and a regular event sheet. You can add it in the functions. Uh, event sheet as well, but just to keep it all in one place, we're gonna add it here, add a global variable. We're gonna go to uh, creature found, and we're gonna make it a value of text, and we can leave the initial value as nothing. And we're going to go to add action, system, set value, and we're gonna go to creature found, and we're gonna name it um, zilbo. And so now, uh, if we roll our roll creature, if our roll creature is greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero or less than 50, so that's a 50% chance of our creature to be found, that will be Zilbo. Uh, so we can actually copy this and paste it maybe twice. We'll do this one to 75, or sorry, greater than 50, greater than or equal to 50, and less than 75. So this is a one in four chance. And this one can be greater than or equal to uh, 75 and less than 100. Cool. And so we can change this guy's name to Poroxis. Poroxis. And this guy can be called uh, Crundiaco. Cool. Uh, so those are our three bug type Pokemon. Um, as you can see, you have a greater chance of rolling our Zilbo, so maybe he is a much more common Pokemon, and etc. Uh, so, uh, so in order to see this, um, I'll show you in a second because we're going to do this first. So let's copy this. Since we have another type of grass, we can go down here and we can change a parameter here from bug to bird. Make sure you put your quotation marks. I think I've been saying parentheses, so just ignore everything that I say usually. So we can set a role creature to um, is fine if we have if we use the same role creature because it's not going to be doing both of these at the same time. Uh, so if we're here, our bird, our first bird is going to be called Flubtron, and this one can be 
twister and we can name this guy fill cool uh, so if we run it we won't be able to see anything because uh, these variables are just occurring under the hood so we can look at them um, real quick by going to inserting a new object we can go to uh, text let's put that here we can call this a uh, debug um, creature for the sake of knowing what it is um, we also want to do one other thing uh, go to our event sheet one go to where our player is overlapping the grass and we have the sub event if rule is less than or equal to 20 then it's going to do this if we if it's greater than 20 then we want to uh, not call our function um, we want to just set our creature found to zero is fine or uh, actually let's make it like an a not any creature um, we can name that whatever uh, so this is just so we can see exactly what's happening um, we're going to go to add event here at the bottom let's change this to every tick and we'll add an action go to our debug creature uh, set text and we're going to go to creature found now we won't actually have this in the game this is just so we can see what's happening so if I did everything right which I think I did then this should work well one more thing our grass is going to be over our character right now and that's because of the Z order what is the Z order? Well, if you've ever used a 3D program, you'll know that X and Y are the two uh, um, axes that are up and, and to the left and right. Uh, but our Z is forward and backward. Uh, so since even though this isn't a 3D program, we still have objects that are underneath objects, um, and that is based on the Z order. So the easiest way to fix this is to right click, go to Z order, send to bottom of layer. Now, uh, it doesn't really matter because these are going to be invisible anyway. Um, but we need them right now so that we can see to make sure our code is working. So let's make this a little bit bigger so there's more of a chance of us finding Pokemon. Make sure it still says cool because that's really important. Okay, so now if everything, if the gods are on my side, you'll see, yeah, there we go. So we got a Zilbo here, nothing, nothing, nothing. A Crudinko, uh, still nothing. A Zilbo, another Crudinko, things. Um, and then over here, we got a Flubtron there, um, of another Flubtron, a Phil, etc. So as you can see, we can modify these numbers a lot uh, to be whatever you want. You might want to make them variables so you can uh, modify them a little bit more easily. Um, so you can change this to be instead of 20, then you know it could be 10 or it could be 50, and you can change all these. You know, if greater than 50, blah blah blah. We can. Uh, you can set all the all, all this yourself. It's totally customizable, and uh, that's super nice. So yeah, so now you can see um, how we've made some random encounters. I'm sorry if this video is a little bit extra long. I had to go over functions, which are a really important thing to learn. Cool. So yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing the actual encounter uh, uh, battle system in the next video. Um, I might, and might not. So it'll be a surprise. So I hope you guys learned a lot, and I will see you next time. So just relax and breathe.